The topic of today's discussion is A Dance of the Forest, a play by Wolf Soinga. It was a controversial play in Soinga's native Nigeria at the time it premiered. A Dance of the Forest was performed during the 1960 Nigerian independence celebration. Soinga wrote the play as a warning to Nigeria and other African countries about the dangers of repeating past mistakes politically, socially, and economically. In essence, Soinka was stating that post-colonial Nigeria could veer towards the same exploitation and oppression that colonizers inflicted upon the native people. The play and its central message anchored the political establishment and the new Nigerian government deemed the publication and performance of A Dance of the Forest an act of rebellion since the play portrayed the Nigerian politicians at the time as corrupt, greedy and inept. However, this portrayal is considered by many African historians to have been fairly accurate. Soinka portrayed the government as aimless and disorganized. He depicted the politicians as more concerned with fighting each other for power and wealth than trying to improve the country. Soinka's criticism of imperialism in Nigeria and other African nations was the prelude for articulating his vision of a new Africa. Soinka proposed solidarity or what could be called pan-Africanism and advocated for the implementation of a pure form of democracy. A Dance of the Forest commissioned for, was commissioned for the celebration of Nigeria's independence in 1960. It makes use of all the devices traditionally found in Yoruba ritual performances like music, dance, masquerade, possession and poetry. Critics have described this play as plotless but Soinga is concerned less with narrative than with folklorism or folkloric dramaturgy based on ritual significance. The play A Dance of the Forest by Ol Soinka begins with a short prologue spoken by the god Aroni the lame one, which establishes the connection between the two sets of characters placed in two different time frames of the play. The first time frame is the present, during the feast of the human community, and the second the past, during the reign of Mata Karibu. At the beginning of the play, God Aroni, the lame one, lays before us the circumstances of the play. Volsoinka lists out the characters before us. The dead man, a character in the play, was a captain in Mata Karibu's army and the dead woman was his wife. Rola is a prostitute and was known earlier as Madame Tortoise. Adinabi is the court orator who was a court historian in his earlier life and he is not aware of the existence of dead people. Dimoki, the coward, was the poet in his previous life. Agboriko is known as the elder of the sealed lips and he made sacrifices for the forest head. The forest head himself disguises as a mortal Obaneji. Obaneji is a municipal records worker who says he respects the festival but it makes him nervous to be around so many people at once. Aroni, the lame one, had requested uh, to send the dead man and woman as representatives of the dead to take part in the feast of the human community. Aroni is searching for both the living humans who have entered the forest and for the dead couple. Aroni summoned the unsettled souls of the dead man and woman because Agboriko, a village soothsayer, was sent to ask the forest gods to send illustrious ancestors to attend the gathering of the tribes. Instead, Aroni roused the spirits of the two accusers or people who were wronged and never received justice. Unknown to them, the reincarnated spirits of those who had wronged the dead man and woman were lured into the forest. Aroni arranged this so that the spirits of the dead couple could finally find peace and the current reincarnations 
could rectify their past sins. In the opening of the play, a dead man and a dead woman gets up from their uh, from their graves. The dead man wears a warrior's clothing and he is described as fat and bloated. The dead woman is pregnant. They could not see each other and looks for someone from the earth to greet and welcome them. Then Adinabi enters but runs away scared. Obanaji enters but retreats as well. When Dimoki enters the scene, he also retreats when the dead woman asks for help. Rola also comes to the scene but she also refuses to help the dead man. The dead man and the dead woman bemoan their plight and the woman says that she has been carrying the child for a hundred generations. Gunshots are heard from a distance and the dead couple leaves the stage. Rola, Adinabi, Obaniji and Dimoki enter the stage and talks about trivial things. Their talk turn to the totem pole made by Dimoki which is now a center of attraction. Soon the dead pair reappears which makes the living characters move away from there. In the next section, we are introduced to an imp, Muret, which lives inside a tree and spy on the people passing nearby. Aroni, the lame one, comes there and they talk about the festivities and rituals that are about to begin uh, to celebrate the gathering of the tribes. One of the rituals was welcoming the dead to their midst. Aroni wants to get information about the people who went by the tree where Muret was hiding. But Muret was unwilling to help. Ogun, the god of uh, cowers, hopes that Muret will tell him where to find the living villagers because Ogun wants to protect Dimoki from Eshuoro, a wayward spirit of the forest. Eshuoro wants to punish Dimoki for killing a man who was a devoted follower of Oro, the god of punishment and death. We learn that the dead pair has been sent by Aroni as a result of the request of the living for some representatives of their illustrious ancestors. Aroni informs Muret that one of the four living characters who has passed by Muret's tree is a servant of Ogun, the patron god of cowers. Agboreko, the elder of the sealed lips, enters and tries to coax Muret and extract information. He was told to return later by Muret. Next, it is Ogun's turn to enter and extract information from Muret. He does it by simply forcing a lot of alcohol down Muret's throat. There is also some talk about Yeshuoro, a wayward cult spirit whom Muret drunkenly threatens to bite if he comes anywhere close. Before leaving, Ogun says that he will not forget that Dimoki had injured the Araba tree, Yeshuoro's favorite, while carving the totem pole. In the next scene, we meet the four villagers once again. They discuss a recent accident with a passenger lorry that was carrying double the number of uh, people than its capacity. Obanaji was interested in this accident because he was responsible for recording the names of everyone involved. He asks Adenabi to provide him with a list of passengers after revealing that only five of the 70 passengers survived a fire aboard the lorry. Rola and Adinabi accuse Obanaji of being insensitive. The talk of the characters now turn towards death. Dimoki suggests that he would rather fall to his death than be burnt like the lorry passengers, citing his apprentice's recent death. Dimoki explains how he could have reached out and helped Orimoli, his apprentice, as he fell from the sacred a rabbi tree that he was helping to carve into the totem pole uh, for the gathering of the tribes. Each member of the groups explains how they prefer to die. Rola tries to kiss Obanaji to demonstrate how she would like to die, indicating that she wants to die while engaged in sexual activity. Soon others realize that Rola is the notorious local prostitute called Madam Tortoise. The dead man and his woman continue their wanderings through the forest. Only Dimoki was ready to talk with them. 
he asked them whether Urimoli had accused Dimoki of murder. They leave the place without answering him. Dimoki confesses that it was he who pushed Urimoli to his death out of envy because he thought that his apprentice was gaining popularity. Disguised as Dimoki's father, Ogun, the god of cowards, continues to search for Dimoki. In the beginning of part 2, Murat and Eshuoru, the wayward spirit, discuss the present things. Eshuoru is especially irritated that Aruni had summoned two dead spirits who were accusers and not received well by the villagers. He was also angry because a sacred tree like Araba was destroyed to cow a totem pole. He vows to take revenge on all humans including Dimoki. In the next scene, it is revealed that Obanaji is actually the forest father or forest head in disguise and he warns the villagers in the forest to admit to and atone for their sins. Abruptly, the scene shifts backward in time by four centuries to a scene in Mata Caribou's court. Rola is the madam tortoise of the past, Caribou's new queen. Dimoki is the court poet who has been involved with Madam Tortoise. In a conversation with the poet, Madam Tortoise asks the poet to retrieve her bird. Dimoki sends his servant to fetch the bird, knowing well that Madam Tortoise only asks a man to fetch her bird when she hopes to get revenge or to be rid of him. Mata Caribou is angry with a warrior who is the dead man from part 1 for not going into war with a neighboring kingdom to retrieve the wardrobe of Madame Tortoise. Caribou has the warrior imprisoned and wanted to execute him for treason. Madame Tortoise tries to seduce the prisoner which was rejected by him. As a revenge, Madame Tortoise has the warrior's pregnant wife, the dead woman uh, from part 1, killed in front of him. At the same time, the servant of Dimoki falls from the roof of the palace trying to get Madame Tortoise's bird, revealing that the reincarnated souls are continuing their sins from their past lives. In the last scene, gods also become involved. Eshuoru remarks that the dead warrior was foolish and he and Ogun quarrel about Dimoki. Soon the dead woman appears before the forester and begs to have her unborn child removed from her sleeping womb. After the dead couple are welcomed, the dance of welcome is performed by the spirits of the forest, represented by Dimoki, Rola and Adinabi wearing masks, who while momentarily entranced, chorus the future. The dead pair listen in suspense to see whether the future will be more auspicious than the past or present. The forest head orders Aruni to relieve the dead woman of her burden, the half-child, in her belly and let the tongue of the unborn stilled for generations be loosened. After the half-child is removed, Eshuoro, Ogun and Dimoki be, uh, uh, become involved in a scuffle to get hold of the, uh, the child. At this point, Dimoki comes forward and in the dance of the half-child, tries to rescue the half-child from the fate of being continually born dead. The significance of Dimoki's intervention is not that it liberates the half-child, but that he has taken the first tangible step toward his own redemption. In the dumb show at the end of the play, the dance of the unwilling sacrifice, Dimoki's totem is silhouetted as the people dance around it. Eshuoro finally uh, consummates his involvement by forcing Dimoki to climb the Araba tree with a basket over his head, a burden representing the blindness of his guilt. Eshuoro then sets fire to Dimoki's tree of transition, from which he falls into the arms of Ogun, the patron god of cowers. Thus, Dimoki's rebirth is symbolized not with words but with dance and music. The impulse toward transcendence originates not from the forest dwellers but from within each mortal, from their inner gods, 
that the forest personifies. The play ends with the revelation of everyone's past identities. The villagers are astonished to learn the truth about their past identities. Forested and Aroni speak about the nature of the past and present as the play ends. A dance of the forest presents a complex interplay between gods, mortals and the dead in which the ideal goal is the experience of self-discovery within the context of West African spiritualism. Although offered to a nation to celebrate its independence, the irony of a dance of the forest is that the victim of its satire is Nigeria itself. Completely devoid of nostalgia, Soinga boldly de-romanticizes his characters by focusing on delusion, death and betrayal. The great gathering of the tribes corresponds to the birth of a nation, but the heady excitement of the present bolstered by a glorious heritage is satirically complemented by a glimpse of the disquieting truths of the human condition accumulated throughout the ages. So Inga's characters are forced to confront the grim realities lurking behind their dreams. The dead man and the woman were selected by God Aroni because in a previous life they had been violently abused by four of the living the four mortals are Rola, an incorrigible hoe nicknamed Madame Tortoise, who was then a queen, Dimoki, now a coward and then a poet, Adinabi, now council orator and then court historian, and Agboriko, elder of seal lips, a soothsayer in both existences. They have been selected because of past debauchery, which Aroni hopes can be expiated through revelation. The ceremony for the self-discovery of the four mortals consists of three parts in this play. First, the reliving of the ancient prototype of their present crimes. Second, the questioning of the dead couple. And third, the welcoming dance for the dead couple. A dance of the forest uses Africa's past to cast blame on the present and future. Events in Nigeria since 1960 including a bloody civil war, have proven Soinga's prescience in predicting the need for rational self-criticism. Thanks for watching.